Remember that this podcast is brought to you by Minda, also known as Minda Kami on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also remember that this podcast is in Bahasa Roja, yaitu campuran Bahasa Melayu dan Bahasa Inggris. I hope you enjoy! Hi, it's Zulaika here and welcome back to the Bora Minda podcast. This is the first ever episode that I'm recording. Um, it's a Saturday. It's pretty, really, it's actually really hot. Um, but I am, I have the AC on. It should be fine, I think. Today, our topic would be on self-awareness. I was thinking about what would be the first episode, what would be the topic for the first episode, and I thought that it would be the best thing is to have self-awareness for the first topic because the things that we're going to discuss about, a lot of it requires self-awareness in order for them to be effective. Jadi, my first topic would be self-awareness atau translation boleh dijadikan sebagai kesedaran diri. First of all, apakah itu self-awareness? According to Debbie Ford, self-awareness is the ability to take an honest look at your life without attachment to it being right or wrong. I want to stress that the word attachment here is very important lah. Because kalau kita nak self-aware, kita kadang-kadang boleh rasa terperangkap dengan persepsi kita terhadap diri sendiri. So macam kau tak suka the fact that you're always late or something like that. Lepas tu kau rasa attached and kau rasa macam asyik terfikir pasal benda tu lah. Tanpa rasa macam sebenarnya kau ada control terhadap apa yang kau buat tu. Self-awareness is also about paying attention and focusing your awareness on yourself. Noticing your feelings, physical sensations, reactions, habits, behaviors and thoughts. And you also have to think about how do you compare to others in terms of your self-awareness. Sebab kita boleh rasa yang kita orang yang self-aware tetapi bila kita tengok pada orang lain mungkin self-awareness dia agak berbeza di mana dia boleh sedar yang certain things memang buat dia marah atau buat dia react in I guess a negative way and kadang-kadang kita macam oh sebenarnya dia boleh nampak eh, yang dia react macam tu bila benda tu jadi kan So, uh, it might be good to compare. I mean, it's not generally good to compare yourself in terms of like your skills and like your competence if it like um if it affects your mental health or it leads you to think worse of yourself. But I guess for self-awareness, it could be good to do that so that we know that where we know where we're at and kita boleh baiki dari situ. And mungkin kita juga boleh tanya kawan kita tu like how do you manage to be self-aware like to your level? Macam mana kau dapat tahu atau sedar yang every time this happens, you will react the same way every time. Sebab sometimes walaupun kita macam biasa kan, kalau benda yang kita tak suka jadi, mestilah kita marah kan. Tapi kadang-kadang kita tak sedar apa sebenarnya benda tu. So itu sebenarnya point self-awareness. Untuk kita tahu pasal situasi kita dan juga cuba untuk cari cara untuk um, improve kita punya situation. Tapi it's actually quite difficult and challenging to be self-aware. Um, I guess it's really hard to like be honest with ourselves sebab self-awareness ni perlukan kita betul-betul jujur pada diri kita sendiri uh, about anything that we do in our daily lives. So, mungkin kita macam reluctant lah atau jauhkan diri daripada cuba practice self-awareness ataupun kesedaran diri. 
But you have to like question yourself. Why are we afraid of being honest with ourselves? So I I was thinking about this for quite a bit. And I think that we have a hard time being honest with ourselves because it means that we have to take responsibility of whatever that happens in our lives. Bukan macam kau robot je. Macam everything that happens to you, it's not your fault. Macam it's because of the system in your workplace. Everyone is so rude. Macam kau tak boleh nak ngam dengan diorang. Like everything is everyone else's fault. So macam bila kita practice self-awareness, kita mungkin sedar yang, oh, sebenarnya mungkin masalah tu datang daripada aku. Like at least sebahagian lah daripada tu kan. And we might not um, be willing to accept that. And self-awareness means that we will have to accept our flaws and our faults. And that can be quite a tough pill to swallow, to be honest. Um, because I would say that I have been practicing more and more self-awareness as the years go by, uh, especially through th- therapy, because I've been in therapy for almost a year now with the same therapist. And memang kita kena practice banyak awareness terhadap apa yang kita rasa uh, and sometimes that means that you have to face the truth that you are doing something problematic so it might be I mean it will be quite tough to actually be honest with ourselves but I guess being aware of why it's so difficult for us to be honest with ourselves is actually a really great start towards um taking more control over our lives and hopefully um, improving the situations in our lives. So let's get into more detail on why is it good to be self-aware atau sedar tentang diri kita sendiri, keadaan kita dan macam mana kita react terhadap um, whatever that's going on in our lives. Sebenarnya kita tak sedar yang kita ada kontrol atau kawalan terhadap perasaan, pemikiran dan perlakuan kita. Dan ianya semua bermula dari self-awareness. So self-awareness equals gaining control of our lives. Self-awareness bermakna yang kita boleh Tambah kawalan kita terhadap keadaan dalam hidup kita. Kita bukan saja boleh dapat nampak kelemahan kita tapi juga kekuatan kita. So, bila kita tahu ada kekuatan dan kelemahan kita, kita boleh buat plan. So, macam mana nak gunakan kekuatan kita sebaik mungkin? Macam mana nak improve kelemahan kita? Apa option yang kita ada untuk... Um, improve kelemahan dan um, gunakan kekuatan kita. Dengan self-awareness, kita lebih sedar tentang punca masalah. Bukan baik untuk diri saja, tapi untuk sekeliling juga. But the one thing I will say is the most important thing about self-awareness is for us to stop ignoring our feelings and explore them. Bila kita ignore Lama-lama kita tak sedar pun kenapa kita rasa unhappy dengan hidup kita. Kita asyik rasa down je tapi macam sebenarnya semua okey je tapi saya aku rasa down lah. So dia macam kita dah pendam atau abaikan perasaan kita sampai ke tahap dia berimpak dekat hidup kita. Dia macam sikit-sikit lama-lama jadi bukit lah sampai ke tahap yang kita tak boleh nak abaikan lagi. Jadi... Kita tak nak sampai tahap di mana kita tak sedar apa masalah kita sampai ke tahap kita macam meletup atau explode with our emotions. So that's why we should stop ignoring our feelings. And I, I read a quote recently on this blog. It says that those that chose not to investigate feelings increasingly felt more anxious and more stressed out. So, macam aku cakap tadi lah, uh, kalau kita pendam lama-lama, kita boleh meletup. And 
benda ni aku rasa berkait jugaklah dengan burnout. So kalau kau orang tak pernah dengar pasal burnout, B U R N O U T. Burnout tu macam situasi atau perasaan di mana uh, selalunya dia berlaku pada orang yang bekerja lah atau buat kerja banyak-banyak sampai rasa macam dia kontrol hidup kau. Um, so burnout jadi bila kita do a lot of work every day or you feel like you're burdened with your work. Rasa macam banyak ah kerja kau and macam tak habis-habis. So the consequences of burnout is that you might feel macam annoyed dekat semua orang atau whatever situation. Kau macam lagi cepat annoyed lah. Kau lagi cepat stress atau lagi susah nak tidur. Mungkin tak reti nak relax. Itu pun salah satu akibat kepada burnout. So in the end, I really hope yang kita um, berhenti mengabaikan perasaan kita. Sebab kalau kita tak, kalau kita tetap abaikan, sebenarnya masalah tu tak akan go away pun. So the only way that a problem can really go away is for you to acknowledge your feelings. Bukan saja sedar tentang perasaan itu, tapi kita perlu juga tahu yang benda tu wujud. Yang perasaan kita ada tu pada waktu itu wujud. Sebab kadang-kadang macam macam aku cakap sebelum ni ya. Um, kita macam, sebenarnya aku tak marah pun. Uh, like, sometimes we would say something like that. Tapi dalam hati kita, kita marah lah. Tapi kita cuba pendamkan sebab kita cuba pendam ataupun tak react macam kita marah. Sebab that's what we've been taught um, growing up. Like that's what I feel like I've been taught as well when I grew up. Not not necessarily through my parents But sometimes it's just like You know like agama Or articles or whatever That you read lah So this brings us to the question Macam mana kita nak mula Untuk explore kita punya emotions Macam mana kita nak mendalami Perasaan yang kita ada Dalam lubuk hati kita Wow, rasa macam Tiba-tiba macam deep Um Mungkin bunyinya simple Tapi kadang-kadang kita tak sedar Yang kadang-kadang kita macam Macam mana aku nak start lah Macam mana nak explore emotions ni Rasa macam Tak apa-apa je kan <laughs> Sebenarnya like I would feel that way If like someone told me to explore my feelings I'm like okay I will explore in my own time Tapi like I said It's really important for us actually um, So how do we begin? The first thing is to listen to your gut. Tepuk dada, tanya sendiri. What are you feeling? Where is that feeling coming from? So we can start by practicing introspection and reflection. So meneliti pemikiran dan perasaan kita sendiri. The most important thing is to be honest about what we're feeling. So your first Thought or feeling Would be Contohnya Ni yang aku tulis lah um, Contohnya kau rasa macam Oh aku tak suka lah tengok orang ni Semua ingat dia hebat sangat Alah, Tak apa-apa je kan Tapi sebenarnya What we're feeling is not actually Like marah yang biasa We might be feeling Jealous of that person So mungkin dari initial feeling kita Kau tak suka orang ni Mungkin tu benar Tapi The root is that you might be feeling jealous. So you have to acknowledge, I am feeling jealous of this person. So dengan kita practice being honest with ourselves, we have to be really, really honest. So like, okay, kenapa aku tak suka orang ni? Kenapa aku tak suka yang orang ni dapat banyak perhatian atau orang tu dia nampak macam lagi hebat? Itu sebenarnya buat aku rasa lebih kecil. Atau rasa macam aku tak mencukupi So that might be the actual problem Rather than simply you not liking that person So kita akan lebih sedar tentang punca masalah um, Bila kita be honest Bila kita betul-betul jujur dengan apa yang kita rasa And dig deeper and deeper Like finding the root of the cause Rather than like being happy with whatever we come up uh, in the first round What other ways can you... Explore your emotions 
Another way is to look at yourself objectively. So you might try to list down your strengths and weaknesses, what things you can work on, like I've said before. You could keep a journal. It could be, I mean, for me personally, I've always found it quite intimidating or overwhelming to start a journal. But a journal can be anything you want it to be. You don't need to pressure yourself to write in your journal every day. Maybe every other day. Maybe a few times a week. But as long as it's like consistent lah. And macam tak ada lah jarak lama sangat. Like once a month it's quite a long period of time. Um, between journal entries. But like I said, journal entries can be anything you want. You could write even like one sentence about your day or what you're feeling and that can really help you in being more aware of what's been going on so but this is what i've learned through therapy is that i forget a lot like what i've been doing the past week i used to have weekly sessions with my therapist and then she would ask me so what have you been doing like what's been going on the past week or so Something like that lah. And I would always say that, I don't know, I don't really remember. But this is what's troubling me right now. So I found out that through therapy that I do tend to forget about what has happened um, over the course of a week or two. Which I feel like happens to a few people that I've talked with. So I don't really know how common it is, but it does happen. So I think that keeping a journal could be a good way of like reminding you that, oh, this day I had quite a bad day and this happened and that that's why I felt that way. And you might forget about that. And this can be problematic sebab bila benda tu jadi lagi and kita asyik rasa upset dengan perkara tu and then you forget and then it happens again and then you forget. And then it happens again. Sampai bila kita nak ada masalah yang sama. Kan? And then, kalau kita ada masalah yang sama, over and over again, and kita ada masalah lain, and ada masalah lain, selagi kita tak cuba untuk sedar tentang masalah itu, atau ignore masalah itu, kita akan forever ada banyak masalah yang kita dah tangguh. For a very long time Sampai ke tahap yang kita ada banyak sangat masalah Yang kita rasa macam Banyaknya benda nak kena buat Tapi aku tak tahu macam nak start But in order to start self-awareness You don't need to like I mean I don't expect you To start with a blank slate Macam contohnya kau tak ada masalah langsung Like that's not gonna happen Um, so, but I, I think it's not too late. It's definitely not too late to learn something new like self-awareness. Because once you learn self-awareness and practice it, you will also know, okay, when do things get overwhelming for me? Like, I have so many problems and I don't know which one to start first. Self-awareness could help you prioritize things. And also set aside time, like you would be more realistic lah dengan whatever you're going through. Like contohnya, like you might find it more difficult for yourself to confront your boss. Contohnya lah. But you can't ignore it anymore sebab it's been like a problem yang macam dah lama dah kan. And selagi kau tak cakap dengan boss kau, kau akan like your problem will persist lah. So you might... Take time for you to figure out what's the best way for you to um, talk to your boss. Maybe not confront your boss. I mean, that sounds a bit scary. Maybe talk to your boss. Which sound better? And like I said, when does it get overwhelming? To what point do you feel like, oh, this is too much for me to tell my boss? Or this is what I'm afraid of? And how do you lessen what you what you're afraid of? How do you react to what you're afraid of? How do you manage what you're afraid of? So self awareness is really key in not only 
preventing problems or getting problems solved quicker, but also breaking down the steps of what you need to do to deal with that problem. Sometimes you can't solve problems necessarily, but we can deal with them in a way that's more manageable for us. I guess that's the way life is. So if you keep a journal, you can also write down your goals, plans, and priorities. So not only like your problems per se, but like what do I need to get done? What do I want to get done? How do I react to getting this thing done? How do I make things better? Like how do I motivate myself more to do this thing? And self-awareness can help you with that. You can also practice meditation and other mindful habits or mindfulness just in general. So meditation and mindfulness is, I would say, is related to each other in the way that meditation helps you to be more mindful about yourself and your situation and the sensations in your body and your thoughts and your feelings or like also practicing being present in the moment. So the goal of meditation could be either one of those. You can find um, tutorials on uh, meditation or like follow a meditation track. Selalunya ada dekat Spotify or YouTube. So sebenarnya senang je nak dapat this meditation practices online. It's quite a popular thing right now. But other than doing things on your own... Like sebenarnya, like these things that I mentioned to explore your emotions could also be helped with a counselor. Which I'm okay. Let us think about what are my emotions, what are my goals in life, all those things. We can work with that. We can work on that with a counselor or by yourself, hopefully. But other ways of becoming more self-aware is you could also um, talk to your friends. But like trusted friends lah. Friends that you know will be honest but also compassionate in giving you feedback or like in describing you like what do you think? What do you think my weaknesses are? What do you think my strengths are? Sometimes I ask people like why are you friends with me? I mean some, for some people I don't really care <laughs> like why they're friends with me but some people I find it quite interesting to know why. And yeah, I think getting descriptions of yourself from your friends could help you better understand yourself in ways that not might be immediately um, visible to you you know you can also ask for feedback at work but like i said if you can handle it um you're prepared for it and you are okay (laughs) <laughs> with getting feedback because for me I'm quite a sensitive person in which I uh, I am quite sensitive to feedback and I take it quite personally uh, even though I try not to uh, so yeah you have to gauge um, how much you can handle and that's what I try to do lah. that's what I recommend doing as well so those are the options of how to explore your emotions and gain self-awareness It's very interlinked, isn't it? Like, self-awareness largely comprises of being aware of our emotions. Because I feel like emotions just happen. Like, I feel like emotions are very... They they just happen without you um, intending for them to happen. And for something like that, it's good for you to be aware of them. It's good for you to except that they happen. I would say my personal opinion would be that emotions, whatever you're feeling, given a situation, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean sometimes you can't explain your emotions, but you can um, figure out how you can manage them better. Like, for example, okay, this bad thing happens to this person yang you tak suka. Um, and kau rasa macam happy lah. It doesn't, like, you don't need to punish yourself for being happy at the unfortunate event of a person. But you do need to think about, like, how do I improve myself? 
I feel like we do punish ourselves for feeling basically anything. Kadang-kadang, I feel like whenever we feel like we're overreacting to a situation, contohnya, you're, you don't like working at a retail shop, something like that lah. Lama-lama kau jadi stress sebab benda tu tak ada meaning kat hidup kau. And kau rasa macam, lama asal aku tak boleh handle lah. Ramai je boleh handle. Dia orang macam pergi kerja macam tak ada masalah pun aku rasa down je bila masuk kerja. Um, like duduk kat cashier. And you might beat yourself up for that. Like I feel like mungkin kau akan rasa macam rasa down lah yang kau tak sampai ke tahap di mana kau boleh handle macam orang lain. And it's okay. Like to feel whatever you feel is okay. But we don't need to punish ourselves for feeling what we're feeling. Like self-awareness, the, the point of self-awareness isn't punishing ourselves or like or like being aware of all the bad things. I mean, there's so many good things about you as well. And it's really hard. It's, I mean, it's really easy to forget that, I guess. But once you practice awareness of not only your negativity, but also your positive side. So that's, that's not that. It's definitely not just focusing on the negativity. Self-awareness encompasses all that you are. So maybe by being more aware of yourself, kau akan sedar yang, eh, sebenarnya aku tak pernah nak focus on like my strengths, kan? Tak pernah nak fikir positif pada pasal diri sendiri. Tak pernah nak bagi diri sendiri break. Nak bagi diri sendiri rehat daripada negative thinking or... Um, punishing myself. Maybe I, I need to take care of myself more. Maybe I need to be kinder to myself. I feel like sometimes um, what I do to help with these situations, I try to think about, okay, what would my best friend say? It doesn't necessarily have to be your best friend. It could be someone that is compassionate towards you. You might, it might be, it might be your auntie. It might be be um, your friend it might be your teacher it might be anyone in the world it might be that stranger you met some day at the bus stop contohnya lah sometimes you actually meet really nice people um, in, in like weird places but anyways I try to think about okay what will my best friend say if I said this about myself like aku cakap dengan kawan aku contohnya like Let me think about my insecurities. I mean, I guess like one of my insecurities is like my body. For example, I'm quite fat, and I like I I'm I am okay with that. But sometimes I do um, feel down about it, and like, oh, why don't I look good in this outfit? Like, I feel like I don't look good, or I look really ugly. Like, <laughs> looking not good is actually like a nice version of. You know, criticizing yourself, I guess. Or you might feel like, why, why am I so petty? Kenapa aku rasa macam aku over, macam aku kelingi atau aku cepat sangat emosi, macam tu lah. And like, if your best friend tells you that they feel bad about themselves, or I feel ugly, or I feel like I overreact to situations, I, I would feel like oh i don't i think you're being harsh with yourself like sometimes we need to be aware of whether we're helping ourselves or being harsh with ourselves and a lot of the times i would say that we are quite harsh on ourselves um we are a lot harsher on ourselves than other people so it might help you to think about What would I do if my best friend said this about themselves? And that brings us to the end of our podcast on self-awareness. I kind of um, talked a lot about self-awareness, giving examples here and there. Um, but I hope it was helpful um, in terms of, you know, the information, the input that I got through uh this is my first episode um first topic really so i'll try to shorten it next time
So here are the key points from this topic: self-awareness. Number one, self-awareness is good for you. Self-awareness also means gaining control of our lives, our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. So more control in our lives means that we have the power to make our lives better. Number two, stop ignoring your feelings and explore them. It might be intimidating to、um, explore your、uh, feelings, but I've given. A few tips on how to start, and maybe you can work this through with a counselor or a friend or any kind of support system. And number three, don't be ashamed about how you're feeling, and don't punish yourself for how you're feeling. The most important thing is for you to figure out what do I do with these emotions, like feeling them on their own. Is not a wrong thing because what matters is our reaction, kan? Sebab kalau orang ni ada emosi ni kita tak lihat stop dia. It's like kind of like an automatic thing. So let's be kinder to ourselves, shall we? If you haven't already, make sure to follow us on our podcast and also all of our social media platforms at Minda Kami on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.